In the wild, speed is an asset. Hunters use it to ambush. Others in silent attack. The fastest animals on the planet use speed to kill. High-speed cameras and a detailed study of anatomy reveal how they do it. In the forest's dark underworld, there's a lot more happening than meets the eye. Weird predators lurk in the shadows. And when disaster strikes, it's blindingly fast. A world of action is hiding in the blink of an eye. At first, the rainforest seems serene, quiet. But below is a world rarely visited by man. A realm of shadows and mist an underworld of hidden threats. Full of creatures that move silently across the forest floor. Hiding up trees, or sailing through the air. Lying in ambush, waiting for the strike. One of the forest's most efficient hunters is on the move. The forest cobra is Africa's largest. Some grow to be 10 feet long. And now, it's hungry. The cobra, like most snakes, doesn't see very well. But then, it doesn't have to. Using its tongue and receptor pits in the roof of its mouth, it can sense the chemical signature of its prey. Olive Toad. The forest cobra has a lightning strike. But for now, it's time for silence and stealth. It knows dinner is nearby, but it's not sure where. So it waits for the toad to move. Cobra is onto it. 
bursts of speed versus relentless stalking. This toad's legs are about half its body length. Powerful thigh muscles act like springs, releasing bursts of energy that enables the toad to hop massive distances. It should be safe in the water. But forest cobras are excellent swimmers too. Now the toad is in the sights of a different predator. In this shadowy underworld, if the cobra doesn't make the kill, the African bullfrog probably will. The snake plays second fiddle, cheated of its dinner by another fearsome predator. Even a cobra would think twice about challenging this monster. Despite appearances, its immense bulk is not obesity. The African bullfrog is a powerhouse of muscle. Strong hind legs and long feet shunt the bullfrog off the ground. At over two kilograms, it launches through the air like a cannonball. The wide mouth with two theodontoids on the lower jaw is like a gin trap. Its strike is as fast as it is powerful. Like anywhere on Earth, rain in the jungle is the elixir of life and it's just as important to the bullfrogs. For most creatures here, the rain has to be tolerated. The normal routines grind to a halt. For others, it's a sign of rebirth. In certain places, the ground moves. These African bullfrogs spent most of the year in a subterranean chamber, waiting in a state of dormancy. Now, they break out of a cocoon of old skin cells, ready for a new chapter. They're awake for one particular mission. The storm summons hundreds of them from the depths. And they all emerge simultaneously. After all those months underground, there are only two things on these giant amphibians' minds. Food and mating. But before they get down to either, there's the matter of dominance.
This is the heavyweight division. The field of battle is a shallow seasonal pool. Larger males claim prime spots and wait for a young Turk to make his play. There's a lot at stake here. Winner takes all. Losers don't get to mate. The legs only make up a quarter of the body mass, but they propel the bullfrog like a battering ram. The odontoids in the lower jaw are the primary weapons, capable of inflicting serious damage. These battles often leave the losers maimed or dead. This big male has won sole rights to all the females in his territory. Once he's mated, the male heads out in search of a good meal. African bullfrogs will eat insects, rodents, reptiles, birds, and other amphibians. Like this unfortunate toad, who's just evaded a hunting cobra. Despite the bulk, he's a very quick hunter. He has to be. The toad is nimble too. With legs approximately 45% of its body length, toads can jump around 20 centimeters at a time. But what of its hunter, the bullfrog? Bullfrog's legs make up 60% of its total length, and its jump can reach 10 times its size, almost two and a half meters. The entire jump lasts only one fifth of a second. It's a lucky escape, but with the undergrowth crawling with bullfrogs, how long will its luck hold out? This one is waiting in ambush, and he's even bigger. even faster. Bullfrog's sharp odontoids quickly crush the life from his hapless prey, and the toad is swallowed whole. But not all hunters are slimy here. Some are six inches wide and hairy.
This is one of the most painful biters in the animal kingdom, with the addition of fangs and venom. The orange baboon tarantula, one of the most aggressive of the species. The orange baboon tarantula sets up shop in a burrow. But it's not just a home, it's a trap too. She's laying silk threads across the door to detect minute vibrations from potential victims. But the threads aren't designed to catch. They're an early warning system that something is approaching. Tiny hairs on her body are extremely sensitive and can also detect the slightest movement. The burrow is complete. Just in time for the day's first customer. But this locust isn't as defenseless as it looks. The locust is famous for jumping 20 times its body length. That's like a human jumping 30 meters. How does it do it? The locust is a living catapult. It presses its femur down fast, compressing the tibia. The sudden release of pressure is like letting go of a stretched rubber band. The locust's extraordinary jump is a critical skill in the dark underworld. Because it's not just the tarantula that's hungry. The gecko isn't much bigger than its quarry, but a juicy locust is too good to pass up. This tiny lizard has a number of tricks up its sleeve. Geckos have a remarkable adaptation that allows them to stick to surfaces like adhesive. Each toe contains hundreds of flap-like ridges called lamellae. On each ridge are millions of hairs, 10 times thinner than a human's. Each hair divides into smaller hairs so tiny that they interact with the molecules of the climbing surface. They're capable of startling acceleration. They can cover three feet in a second. But the gecko has made a grievous error. And the hunter is stopped in its tracks. The gecko is quick, but not quick enough. With eight legs, the spider is able to hold it in place until it can deliver the strike. Like a switchblade, the fangs extend outward to bite. Muscles around the venom glands contract, forcing venom through huge, hollow fangs. The dying gecko will be stored in the back of the burrow for later consumption. The forest cobra lost out on the toad, but it's still on the hunt. Sunset's approaching. The cobra decides to explore an abandoned train tunnel.
bats. It's time to leave the cave to hunt themselves. It looks like the cobra has arrived too late. These bats are just emerging from torpor, a state of low metabolism they enter when food supplies are low. They need to move and stretch to get their flight muscles working again. Letting go before they're ready to fly means they'll plummet the tunnel floor. Most of the bats are limbered up and leaving. But this one's not quite there yet. For a bat, this is the worst case scenario. Not a moment too soon. Bats are the only true flying mammals. Their flight is completely different from that of birds. A bat does flap its wings. But while bird wings have feathers projecting back from thicker bones, bats have thinner, more flexible membrane wings stretched between complex finger bones. The flexibility means their wings can take different shapes, generating lift, increasing maneuverability, and allowing them to make hairpin turns. Thousands of bats pour into the sky in search of food. Bats may be agile flyers, but they're not the only ones. The red-tailed hawk is a keen-eyed, efficient hunter. Two and a half pounds of agile muscle. It can plunge at speeds of up to 160 kilometers an hour and pick a bat from the sky. The bats, as fast as they are, can't match this raptor for pure speed. But a red-tailed hawk has only two talons. It has to eat its catch on the wing. Most bats make it past the hawk and into the night. Their special wings make them efficient hunters. But their prey respond with hardware of their own. The greater wax moth has tympanic membranes or eardrum-like structures on its thorax, directly connected to auditory nerves. This species has the most sensitive hearing on Earth. It allows them to hear the bats long before the bats can sense them, so the moths can go silent and slip away undetected. Bats use sonar, or echolocation, to find prey in the dark. They generate high-pitched sounds in their larynx and project them through their mouth. 
When the sound wave bounces back, they can extrapolate the location of their target from the precise way the sound echoes inside their ears. But if bat echolocation is so good, how did this bat manage to fly right by his dinner? The tiger moth has evolved its own special defense, a jamming device. Instead of just listening, the tiger moth's tympanic membranes can generate a stream of high-pitched clicks, which confuses the bat sonar system. But not all the species here tonight have these advanced defenses, and those that don't are in trouble. The bat doesn't use its mouth. Using its wingsuit, it scoops the prey with its tail. It sacrifices aerodynamics to form a cup like a baseball mitt. Then it transfers the moth to its mouth. All in a fraction of a second. Back on the forest floor, the cobra is still on the hunt. This time, hot on the scent of new prey. Brown rat. It can't fly like a bat, and it can't leap like a toad. It should be an easy target. Sometimes you set an ambush. Sometimes you just chase your prey. The cobra tracks the smell of the rat. Once the cobra's venom is coursing through the rat's veins, there's no reason to hold on to it any longer. As the rat dies, it's already being digested from the inside by the venom. Cobras don't chew, they swallow their prey whole. Their jaws dislocate to make the opening wider, and they lubricate their prey with saliva so they go down easier. The saliva also contains powerful digestive enzymes. Finally, the cobra has succeeded. The forest underworld may contain lightning-fast terrors like the cobra and tarantula, but there's an even darker layer down below. At the lowest parts of the forest, it's damp, the home of the weird. 
but the velvet worm has to be one of the strangest. This tiny caterpillar-like animal lives in the shadows. As a result, velvet worms are almost impossible to find. Legs with retractable claws run the length of the 10 centimeter body. The skin is waterproof, useful in the moist depths of the rainforest. But the strangest thing about the velvet worm is its method of attack. It's a deadly underworld predator, and this one has picked up the presence of a beetle. It's close enough to deploy its secret weapon. To the side of its antennae are two modified legs called oral tubes. Connected to these are a pair of large slime glands, so large that they account for over 10% of the velvet worm's body mass. Muscles contract around the glands, shooting a sticky slime out of the tubes aimed at the beetle. Of course, it doesn't always hit the bullseye on the first try. But the velvet worm has plenty of slime. As soon as the goo hits home, it starts to harden, and the prey is stuck. Now all that remains is for the velvet worm to rip off pieces of prey, soften them up with digestive saliva, and then down the hatch. Or whatever passes for the hatch in a velvet worm. As you move deeper into the forest underworld, things become more and more surreal. Light plays tricks. Plants look like animals. And some animals look like plants. A whip snake's eyeballs are unusually horizontal. And giant insects pose as part of the forest. These are all attempts to hide or to hunt, preludes to speedy attacks or escapes. But one alien form is all hunter. And the praying mantis is a bloodthirsty one at that. Mantids rely on deception and camouflage to get close. But it can move quickly into position. In more ways than one. Locusts have an impressive leap, too. They're heavy-bodied and strong. But this one doesn't notice the stealthy approach. Claws can grip on vertical surfaces. Weapons are poised.
plants don't strike like lightning, but this one does. The pincers are immensely strong, and decapitation is the coup de grace. The mantid has an insatiable hunger. Everything is consumed. Night in the dark underworld is also weird. This is the sound of the greater Galago, a small primate known as the bush baby. It awakens at night to find food. Tree sap forms a large part of its diet. The bush baby's hands and feet are definitely made for gripping and climbing, but it does use an additive. It improves its technique by urinating on its feet. It's all about grip. The long, slender fingers and toes have flat discs of thickened skin to aid in traction. A shorter index finger helps with grip on bigger branches. The odd finger out is the toilet claw, used for grooming and cleaning its ears. Its large eyes give it the equivalent of night vision. Its big, bat-like ears can pick up the flutter of insect wings, of which there are many tonight. As it happens, there's more to the bush baby's diet than tree sap. Despite the cuddly appearance, it's a nimble predator. One study suggests that its jumping muscles are nine times more efficient than a frog's. It's almost as good as flying. The key to its leaps are the legs and tail. The bush baby's tail is longer than its entire head and body. It balances the animal before its jump, then acts as a rudder during flight. Its hind leg muscles are unusually long and make up 10% of its body weight, twice as much as ours do. A bush baby has been observed jumping more than six meters from one tree to another. Turns out, the hunter isn't interested in moths at all. It's got its eyes on a juicier target. The rat's a good climber, but compared to the bush baby, it's a beginner. While this hunter is on rat patrol, his family watch and learn. One last leap, and he's got it. The rodent never saw it coming.
bush babies don't share their meals, and this rat catcher is no different. The next morning, on the fringes of the underworld, the rising sun intrudes on the deep shadows. But for some, it's the perfect time to hunt. This slender mammal usually hunts at night, but when the weather's cool enough, it'll venture out during the day. It's cryptically spotted, better for blending with the undergrowth. Its larger cousin, the leopard, kills less than 40% of the prey it goes after. Lions, only 30%. This is the serval, and it only takes two attempts to get something to eat. It weighs about 12 kilograms, but it's fast. It's the second fastest cat after the cheetah. If you compare the serval's proportions to those of other large cats, it looks almost misshapen. Its legs, relative to the rest of its body, are the longest of any cat. This, along with its long neck, earns it the nickname Giraffe Cat. If we had ears the same proportion to our head as servals do, they'd be the size of dinner plates. Because it's not that big, the serval goes after smaller prey, like rodents, birds, reptiles, and even insects. This solitary hunter can actually use echolocation to find his prey, hidden in the undergrowth. One of the reasons the serval has such a high hit rate is that it doesn't waste much energy. It homes in on prey using its acute hearing and only pounces when it's close enough to be sure. Like so many master predators, the serval begins with patience and finishes in a blaze of speed. It's heard something, a helmeted guinea fowl. At a foot high and weighing over two kilograms, it's big prey for the serval. Unlike many birds, the guinea fowl gets its initial lift into the air not from its wings, but from its powerful legs. It stores elastic energy in its leg muscles and releases it just before the vertical jump that gets it airborne. For an ungainly looking bird, guinea fowl are notoriously hard for predators to snag. But the serval is not impressed. It has a few tricks of its own. The guinea fowl knows it's a target. When the serval runs, it moves vertically as well as horizontally, so it can keep track of its target. Despite these bursts of speed, the serval's long legs are adapted for pouncing, not running. Muscles transmit forces via tendons in the elongated toe bones that behave like springs. The tendons act as power amplifiers, storing the energy of the muscular work, then releasing it quickly to power the serval off the ground.
As it closes in, the guinea fowl shows its hand, a powerful leap into space. But the serval has won better. Unfortunately for the cat, it's a miss. But there's another chance. The serval is good for another leap. Second time lucky. This is the black sparrowhawk, the spirit of the forest in all its high-speed glory. Constantly alert for the presence of some weaker creature, it must hunt in one of the toughest environments on Earth. The black sparrowhawk is big, fast and acrobatic. It has to be. The Sparrowhawk has a particular genius. It navigates the dense forest cover at high speed, all the while keeping its eye fixed on the prize. Brilliant aerodynamics are at work as the raptor deftly avoids obstacles. Then it dives below the radar, pulling up from below. we don't see. The ones that live in the dark, beneath the forest canopy. They come at their victims with blinding bursts of speed. If you even lay eyes on an underworld predator, it's probably too late. <laughs> 